Okay, this is uh, uh, night walking with Ange uh, <laughs> Angelina and Freckles. Say hi, Freckles. <laughs> All right, but today's morning walk got messed up, and so we're gonna do a night walk. <sighs> okay. Hey, uh, I don't have my keys. Sorry, babe. So, uh, let's see. Uh-oh! Tonight, we'll be reading a book entitled Existentialism, A Brief Introduction. Christmas. Oh boy. That would be a good one, but maybe we should save it for the night before Christmas. Do you think there was a cat underneath my busted car? This here's my broken car that I mentioned as to why I'm walking everywhere now. And as you can see, this this light got all smushed right here and the bumper got ripped off and still waiting for insurance. But luckily I've got all these philosophy books to help me make sense of all the silliness that insurance has. What do you think about that, babe? All right. Chapter one, philosophy as a way of life. If I do not reveal my views on justice in words, I do so by my contact conduct. Hey, there's Ed. Hey, there's Oliver. Hey, guys. <laughs> Bye, cat. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> Sorry. Aww. <laughs> Sorry, man. You too. Despite its claims to be novel and unprecedented, oh boy, existentialism represents. I'm gonna have to zoom in. Hold on. Okay. A long tradition in the history of philosophy in the West, extending back at least to Socrates. Oh my gosh. So as you can see, gang, the sidewalk here is just terribly, terribly shoveled. But if I was uh, perhaps a better philosopher, I would come shovel it. But there's bunny tracks. It's kind of adorable. There's rabbits in the neighborhood. I didn't know that. But anyway, this is the practice of philosophy as care of the self. Its focus is on the proper way of acting rather than on an abstract set of theoretical truths. Thus, the Athenian general Lachis, in a platonic dialogue by that name, admits that what impresses him about Socrates is not his teaching, but the harmony between his teaching and his life. And Socrates himself warns the Athenian court at the trial for his life that they will not easily find another like him who will instruct them to care for themselves above all else. Oh. So, Socrates was from Spokane? Sure. It's a joke. <clears throat> this concept of philosophy flourished among the Stoic and Epicurean philosophers of the Hellenistic period. Their attention was focused primarily on ethical questions and discerning the proper way to live one's life. As one classical scholar put it, philosophy among the Greeks was more formative than informative in nature. The philosopher was a kind of doctor of the soul, prescribing the proper attitudes and practices to foster health and happiness. Speaking of health, Honey, I forgot to track the walk. Oh no. 
All right, there we are. Do, do, do. All right, gang. So health and happiness doctors, Greek philosophers, who knew? Of course, philosophy, as the pursuit of basic truths about human nature and the universe, was also widespread among the ancient Greeks and was an ingredient in the care of the self. Oh, it's too dark to read right here. Hold on one moment. <sighs> so I'm finding some flaws in my plan to read at night on these walks. But it uh, sure is fun actually walking with people, which is nice. And look at that beautiful willow tree. Yeah, that's a willow, right? No, What, what? I don't think so. It isn't? I think it is. If you know if it's a willow tree or not, let me know in the comments. I have six subscribers. Six. Surely, of the six, someone knows. Do you know them all? No, I don't. One's, one is a name that's all in Cyrillic, and I, don't, I can't translate it. I could copy it and Google translate it, but I haven't yet. Anyway, hello to my Cyrillic uh, lettered friend. Of course. Philosophy, as the pursuit of basic truths about human nature and the universe, was also widespread among the ancient Greeks and was an ingredient in the care of self. It was this more theoretical approach that led to the rise of science and came to dominate the teachings of philosophy in the medieval and modern periods. Indeed, theory today is commonly taken as synonymous with philosophy in general, as in the expressions political theory and literary theory, to such an extent that the... Oh, goodness. Hold on. The action scene. And go. Da -ba -ba -bum. Freckles. The flying... Pooch, floof, the flying floof pooch, something like that. Uh, anyway, at issue in this distinction between two forms of philosophy, among other things, are two different uses of truth, the scientific and the moral. The former is more cognitive and theoretical. The latter more self-formative and practical, as in to thine own self be true, whereas the former made no demands on the kinds of person one should become in order to know the truth. For the 17th century, philosopher René Descartes, a sinner could grasp a mathematical formula as fully as a saint. Oh, there they go. The latter kind of truth required a certain self-discipline, a set of practices on the self, such as attention to diet, control of one's speech, and regular meditation, in order to be able to access it. It was a matter of becoming a certain kind of person, the way Socrates exhibited a particular way of life, rather than of achieving a certain clarity of argument or insight in the way that Aristotle did. In the history of philosophy, care of the self was gradually marginalized and consigned to the domains of spiritual direction, political formation, and psychological counseling. There were important exceptions to this exiling of moral truth from the academy. St. Augustine's Confessions, A.D. 397, Blaise Pascal's Panacee, 1669, and the writings of the German Romantics in the early 19th century are examples of works that encouraged this understanding of philosophy as care of the self. What do you think so far, honey? Yeah. Way to go, German romantics. I guess. I don't know. I'm just making it up now. It is in 
It is in this larger tradition that existentialism, that existentialism as a philosophical movement can be located. The existentialist can be viewed as reviving this more personal notion of truth, mm, a truth that is lived as distinct from and often in opposition to the more detached and scientific use of the term. Interesting. It is not surprising that both Soren Kierkegaard and Friedrich Nietzsche, the 19th century fathers of existentialism, had ambivalent attitudes towards the philosophy of Socrates. On the one hand, he was seen as the defender of a kind of rationality that moved beyond merely conventional and subjective values towards universal moral norms for which Kierkegaard praised him and Nietzsche, mm, what's that say, censured him. When it gets dark, folks, it's just darn near impossible to read the words. So if you see me tilting the Kindle left, right, and center, it's because I'm trying to access the streetlights. Anyway, but they both respected his individuating leap across the gap in rationality between the proofs of personal immorality and his choice to accept the sentence of death imposed by the Athenian port. And then in parentheses it says, Socrates was tried and found guilty on charges of impiety and for corrupting the youth by his teachings. In other words, each philosopher realized that life does not follow the continuous flow of logical argument. <laughs> that was a big block of eyes. And that one often has to risk moving beyond the limits of the rational in order to live life to the fullest. As Kierkegaard remarked, many people have offered proofs for the immorality of the soul, but Socrates, after hypothesizing that the soul might be immortal, risked his life with that possibility in... Oh boy, huh, hold on one second. Got a little bit of an issue here. Got to get back into the light. Get to the light. Isn't that a, isn't that a existential thing to say or something like that? I don't know. Now I'm just making stuff up to fill the time during filming. Uh hmm. Uh oh. Oh no, guys! It has gotten so cold that my poor little. Uh, display on the Kindle has frozen. So I think uh, I think we're just going to retire that one. We'll put that in the old <laughs> coat pocket here. Let it warm up for a bit. But um, I don't know. That's a bummer. Goodness. Well, it's cold tonight, isn't it? What did it get down to tonight, darling? Cold enough to what? Cold enough for snow pants. Snow pants, yeah, that's true. Well, thank goodness. Here, let's be good citizens of America. There we are. Move your trash can out of the way for you, Bubba. <sighs> so, this here's my city. Excuse me. As you can see, these these are not the uh, weird tracks of some strange beast, but rather uh, chains that people who want to drive their cars in this type of business have to have on their on their vehicles. And I know uh, lots of folks in Northern Europe and North Dakota and stuff like that, they, uh, they're like, yeah, big whoop, but uh, I don't know. It's a big whoop to me, but oh man, that's pretty interesting about that uh, uh, whole, you know, Socrates and his philosophy was uh, embodied by his actions. 
But, uh, I don't know. What do you think about uh, first part of the introduction to existentialism? Uh, let me know in the comments below. But uh, I wish that Kindle hadn't frozen up. That's kind of disconcerting. Uh, but, I mean, look. Look around. <laughs> it's frozen. It's frozen for sure. So, all right. Well, we're going to pack it in here. Freckles, you want to go over one more time? Oh, look at him. Turbo dog. All right. Say bye, Angelina. Okay. See you, everybody.